These are images coming from God's own country where members of the Kerala Congress and youth wing behaved like barbarians, killing dogs and then parading around town with the carcasses. In Kerala, these people did not hesitate in saying that they will kill stray dogs again. This again stresses on an urgent need to amend the existing laws against cruelty to animals. The laws extremely lax encourage people to take it into their own hands. Yes, there is a huge problem in Kerala about stray dogs biting, attacking, mauling people. But is this a civilized way to protest? Good evening. You're watching Up South. I'm Padmaja Joshi. Before we get you details of that story, let's take a quick look at what's happening in Hyderabad, where rain fury continues. Life has been brought to a standstill. Despite the water receding from most areas, those living in the low-lying areas are still in misery. Much of it because of arbitrary permission given to builders to construct a story which is pretty much the same across Chennai, Bengaluru and now Hyderabad. It was at midnight when the flash floods hit and washed away everything he owned. Narasimha Murthy was asleep with his wife and two children in the small basement area in the parking lot of this building in Kutbulapur. Water ये कर दागो इसने रिदिगो इन्दे कर दागो इसने सरो मत्तो ये अत्मा तो इच्छा ना यानि सामाले यानि तीरन के मल्ली ने बैंक पर पार पे यानो इसी तो वंगरों पेटकोन ना दे पाप अपानसन पेटकोन ना पाप तो वंगरों वाला जार पे पड़ पे नंदे मूर्ति इस डी वॉचमैन ऑफ दिस बिल्डिंग अर्निंग 5000 रुपीस अ मंथ हिज वाइफ इस हाउसमेड Okay, this is the way how the Nizampet people have given permission to these apartments without any basic amenities. The government has now taken the move to identify and demolish over 28,000 illegal constructions on lake beds. The Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation has begun its demolition drive and the Telangana government has assured a house for those lost in the drive. This is no lake where I'm standing, but land meant for excess water to freely flow when the lake behind overflows. The lesson is simple. When you build your houses on such land, water starts flowing into your homes. With camera person Srinivas, Revti Rajman for India Today. Ashish, in fact, now joins us live from Hyderabad. Ashish, this story of apathy extends across our metro cities. Wanton illegal construction takes place till the time Tragedy hits and then people indulge in a knee-jerk reaction. The action we are seeing right now, is this comprehensive or just some showboating post what happened? Uh, Padmaja, you was there in Bangalore. Uh, after Bangalore flood, the local administration started the demolition drive and now you can uh, assess the situation. Is, uh, the demolition drive is completely stopped in Bangalore. Same thing is, has started here in Hyderabad, the Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation. In past two days, if you talk about today also, if you ca count today also, in past two days they demolished al almost 39, over 39 illegal structures built over lake beds and storm water drainage. But whether it, this, this drive will continue uh, over the month and over the week is a big question. However, uh, the CM Ch K Chandrasekhar Rao has confirmed, he has admitted that over 28,000 illegal structures are made on lake bed as well as storm water drainage and that caused the flood-like situation in Hyderabad. Now, weather department has again predicted uh, uh, heavy to very heavy rainfall later this week. Definitely, uh, the Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation is preparing to face that uh, heavy to heavy, very heavy rainfall spell, but definitely mm. the victim and the, the the persons who are suffering are basically of lower middle class and middle class because of this drive, uh, Padmaja. But what about the big builders? Are you saying that there are no big builders, the big fish who've actually indulged in this illegal construction? Is there going to be only cosmetic action where a few slums, a few middle class households are going to be raised to the ground? What about the others? Uh, definitely, uh, Padmaya, like uh, we saw this story earlier, uh, just a while back, 
This story is of Kukatpalli area uh, under Kutbulapur division. This entire area is uh, now under illegal construction. But the big question is who gave the, gave the permission of these illegal construction in that area. And now government has decided to raise down all those structures. Definitely the sufferer will be the common people, the, the common people. And the big question is that in past several years, these construction were somehow, uh, uh, somehow it, they were backed, the, con uh, the contractors were backed okay. by the politician. So a big question on the political and, uh, and the contractor nexus also. How However, CMKCR has confirmed that let it be of MLA, let it be of MPs, let it be of any minister. Hmm. They will raise down all those structures, but we have to wait and watch Padmaja. Well, that's what the Chief Minister is saying right now. But will the linkages emerge of how politicians also may just be involved in this illegal construction and will action then be taken? Ashish will be keeping a close watch for now. Ashish, thanks. Now let's... Uh, talk about that shocking story we mentioned right at the beginning where a protest in God's own country went completely haywire. Maybe the message which the Kerala Youth Wing, Kerala Congress Youth Wing wanted to carry was a good one. They wanted to protest against the stray dog menace. Remember a number of people have been attacked and mauled by stray dogs. But the means that they resorted to can be, cannot be called anything other than disgusting and inhuman. Images you won't forget soon. A demonstration with dead dogs tied to a pole. This is Kotiam, a quaint town in God's own country. And this is how political groups are tackling the stray dog menace. The Kerala Congress Youth Wing beat up stray dogs and paraded the carcasses around town. <laughs> After the parade, the youth wing left the dogs at the post office asking the authorities to send the dogs to Benka Gandhi. The carcasses were later removed by local authorities and buried in a nearby ground. All three dogs are not raven. This is Liranjan, a seven-year-old whose video has gone viral on social media. This youngster, son of an animal rights activist, challenged the protesters. This is not the first time the issue of animal cruelty has come to light. The video of a dog being thrown from the terrace of a building in Chennai caused massive outrage. The weak laws in the country against animal cruelty need to be amended. Harsher punishments handed out for the shameless pride to be washed out. With Revati Rajivan, your report, India Today. In fact, Revati Rajivan is now joining us live on that story. Revati, is there going to be a case registered against these uh, men because they have murdered dogs paraded with them and also assembled uh, what are the what are the kind of charges that can be brought against these people well, uh, the Kerala police has registered a case against 15 uh, young politicians who um, uh, killed these dogs and paraded them in public. But the concern is much larger than that. It is not just about uh, uh, booking a case every time a dog is killed in Kerala. Now, this is not the first time that the public has come out and killed stray dogs uh, as a protest against the government. This has happened before as well. So the problem is whether the government is taking effective measure to tackle this particular problem. It is an ongoing issue. Remember, more than a month ago, a 65-year-old woman was mauled to death by a pack of stray dogs. Uh, continuously after that, even small children were attacked by stray dogs. Now, there is also a need for uh, awareness among the people that killing stray dogs, killing five or six stray dogs uh, at a time is not a solution to this particular problem. Every time this issue comes up, the government announces a sterilization program. But how effective is that remains a question. On the ground, there is nothing much that is being done. The stray dogs are not completely sterilized. Every time the problem rises, the government announces the program, starts a sterilization program. Mm. But it is not consistent. It needs to happen for a, a point of time until when the issue is completely solved. But that does not happen. Uh, uh, it, this is an ongoing issue that is there. There is no continuous solution. There is no consistent uh, pattern or measures that is taken by the government. Also, there is no awareness program mm. among the people by the government to say that this is not a way of protesting and this is definitely not a permanent solution. 
Exactly, and 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 the more the government ditters, the more it emboldens people like these Congress, so-called youth Congress workers, to carry out such bizarre, disgusting, and ruthless protests. So, is there any action plan at all, Revati, to control the stray dog population? Well, as uh, like always. Uh, uh the government has announced the sterilization program, the animal birth control program, and in Tiruvannathapuram city, a city, it is expected to start in October. But uh, uh, usually, what uh, happens is that the announcement is made, and after some time, the uh, whole protest and uh, the issue dies down, and the government forgets that nobody really takes uh, genuine uh, care of the problem. Uh, nobody really takes strong measure to uh, tackle this problem continu continuously. There is definitely no consistency that uh, is seen in the measures that. Is being taken so uh, hopefully uh, the government will begin uh, the sterilization program the animal birth control program and continuously uh, uh, take care of this program uh, and the, tackle the issue uh, and provide a permanent solution to the problem that is what is being hoped for but uh, uh, the people hope that their government does not repeat what the previous government also did that start a program and then leave it off after a while when the whole noise around it dies down all right for now reti rajivan thank you very much uh, for joining us on that story we're certainly hoping that the issue will not die down with the outrage meanwhile in the wake of the kaveri water dispute between karnataka and tamil nadu the supreme court today asked the central government to intervene and facilitate a meeting between both states the apex court has also asked karnataka to release 6000 cubic of water over the next 3 days to tamil nadu this comes after the supreme court bench headed by justice deepak mishra heard a plea filed by karnataka where they had requested for a modification in the petition protests and widespread violence had erupted following the initial supreme court order which directed karnataka to release 15000 cubic of water to tamil nadu the supreme court had then reduced this amount to 10000 cubic which the state still refused to comply with in fact they refused to release the water after calling for an all party meeting and i think uh, they have not held the government in contempt so that is a good thing my colleagues rohini and akshara akshaya now both join us uh, on up south i want to ask you first rohini what next because they have tried every trick in the book karnataka has tried to employ it to not give water to tamil nadu but no one is buying it least of all the court well this is a tough decision in front of karnataka at this point of time but at the same time while the fact that when the legislature is met and they had this unanimous decision and this has been conveyed to the supreme court uh, it is seen how the supreme court has taken the matter and not considered it contempt that itself is a good thing but the second point is that karnataka is welcoming talks with tamil nadu because this is the first time we'll actually see the executives of both the states are uh, coming together and discussing this entire issue especially when we've seen it going a uh, blowing out of proportion in the last few weeks and we've seen how violence also took over in uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu equally but the Karnataka government as of now saying that they would like to consult their legal team and look at the next course of action talking about 6000 cubic of water being released over 3 days that will be a decision that the Karnataka government will take but what my sources are telling me is that while they're discussing this with the legal team they may call for another all party meeting because the decision needs to be taken again unanimously and based on that, the Karnataka chief minister So we'll take a call. At the same time, the uh, Karnataka BJP chief, Mr. B. S. Yadurappa, while saying that it's very sad that the order has come to the Supreme Court this way of releasing water, they also feel that at one point of time the Congress government is also possibly politicizing the entire issue. But we need to see whether the BJP, the JDS, and other parties, along with the Congress, are <coughs> on the same page, especially for this issue on the Kaveri water release. Akshaya, so far everything has been going. smoothly for tamil nadu but with the center being asked to intervene is there any way at all that some leeway is going to be shown to karnataka by tamil nadu considering now sidaramaiah's government is saying we don't have water to drink leave alone release for the samba crop to tamil nadu well padmaja the supreme court's announcement today has come as a welcome relief for most of the people in tamil nadu though the supreme court had earlier also said that 6000 cubic of water has to be released it was not done and uh, today's uh, order is come as a relief for most of the farmers around there they are they are hopeful that another positive output will be the one that will be seeing uh, in the near future also but uh, as you had mentioned uh, earlier chief minister j jayalalitha was there in the front fighting the legal battle but right now chief minister j jayalalitha is admitted in the hospital and the 
AIADMK stand has only been that they will be moving the court and uh, they will be requesting that Karnataka follows the rules that have been written and also the order given by the Supreme Court. And uh, it is seen that in Tamil Nadu there was not an all-party meeting unlike how they had one in Karnataka. So the hope is that there wouldn't be any changes and the centre will be with the farmers here and uh, that the Samba crops will not get destroyed as uh, CR Saraswati, the AIADMK spokesperson had said. Uh, but the, the future still holds uncertain because within two days another order will be passed by the Supreme Court and uh, the 6,000 cusics of water which needs to be released, this, uh, uh, there's no certainty that Karnataka will be releasing that or not because they had already passed a resolution that they don't have enough water to send it to Tamil Nadu which means even now they'll go on with the same stand but it needs to be seen if Supreme Court's order which is being given right now will be followed or not. Padmaja. Alright, for now Rohini and Aksha, thank you very much for joining us, heading into a very quick break on up south but the other big stories from the south coming up in a couple of minutes don't go anywhere